Hey everybody, Jessica Cabasi here, and it's been a while since I recorded something last because I was on a trip overseas, so finally got back into the swing of things, and um, I posted a picture which got a lot of um, likes, and I mean, a lot of people were asking me questions about it, so I figured why not make a tutorial about it. Now the image that I'm referring to is this one here, and this is without the editing. This is how it looks with the editing that I did, and this is without. And I posted a comment saying that the editing in this picture was very hard, and it's true because I swear to God, I did like 20 million different colors for this image. And this is the one that I really liked, so let me just zoom in here and show you guys real quick. Um, this was done with a couple of curves layers and some other things. Very, very basic stuff. Nothing crazy. And I'm going to show you exactly how to kind of emulate that look in this photo. And I narrowed it down so there's not so many layers. Because I didn't want to do like a 20 layer tutorial. But first things first, I'm going to edit the picture. So this is going to be like a full tutorial where I edit and show you guys exactly how everything's done. So first things first, I'm going to use my frequency separation technique. If you don't know how to do this and you don't know what I'm talking about, um, go visit my earlier videos. I have videos specifically for this technique and it's a great retouching technique that I use. And when I'm doing this, I'm using a tablet and I'm, I've been meaning to do like a video where I show everyone the tools that I use, but haven't gotten around to it. It's been a little tough to do to do those videos where I'm talking because my mom keeps coming like people randomly will just come down and be like what are you doing like they'll watch they'll see me doing it and I'll just be like screw this I won't record anymore so right now I'm just using healing brush and her face is um, pretty clear the way it is I'm not gonna add it too much but I am gonna get rid of that line this line right here yeah, I mean, I mean that's what they do for retouching. They edit some stuff that may or may not need to be edited, but I mean it's just personal preference. And I'm just gonna do this fairly quickly. Nothing too crazy, as you can see. It was freezing cold when we took this picture, by the way. Fr absolutely freezing. I we I took th these set of photos in like five minutes, and we went inside the car. Okay, I'm pretty much nearly done. And don't worry about any other lines. You don't want to edit over any significant lines. So lines of her nose and eyes, you want to keep keep those areas clear. And I'm going on the highest frequency separation layer and just cleaning up some lines. Nothing too crazy. I'm not crazy. Okay. Sorry if I just ramble on. Sometimes I'm like, why did I just say that? But then other times I'm like, I'm not gonna re-record this video, so I'll just keep <laughs> I'll just keep what I said in there. So that looks pretty good to me. Um one trick that I use is I make another layer. And it's a skin color layer, so I always want to keep it under the high frequency layer which again is the skin texture layer and what I'll do is I'll sample a color of skin so holding alt and I'll make sure my opacity is like 11 percent and I'll just slightly go over and I will make sure that this layer setting is set to lighten so it's very subtle but again you don't want to go over any significant lines like you don't want to do what I just you don't want to do this because you're going to be able to see it just kind of like fluff. It's like a fluffy, fluffy brush. Okay. Okay, I'm not gonna go too crazy on the editing here because I mean, really, it's pretty good. Um, wouldn't normally do like any dodging or burning highlights for this. I think it's pretty good as is, and I did that in probably like two, three minutes. I don't know. You guys can time me. So I just kind of cleaned up her skin just a little bit. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and do the colors. 
And let me save this before like my whole computer shuts down because I'm not doing that again. Okay. So again, primarily this look is using a lot of curves, which there's nothing wrong with using curves. I use them for like 90% of my colors. So if you want to just, again, just go to layer, new adjustment layer, curves. We're going to start with the first one. Yay! Okay. So we're going to start with the RGB layer. And we're going to pull up. So there's less black tones in the photo. It's looking for the correct word to use. And then we're going to go from RGB to red. We're going to pull up that red as well and from the side as well and we're just gonna put a tiny point in the middle and honestly let me tell you something you can ask anyone there's no real technique to doing this you just kind of sample colors you experiment and that's how you figure out curves there's no like go-to thing except for RGB um, that I use but normally I just sit and experiment honestly um, so that's really the, the best advice I can give you is just to experiment. And we're going to do the same with pretty much all the colors. I think we're just going to like bring down the main colors. And so it's going to kind of give it like a vintage feel, which I really like. And as well for this. And the blue, which is my favorite. There we go. So just with one curves layer, look what I was able to do. Like that looks, yeah. It looks like how it looks. We're not finished yet. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to bring down the opacity to 64, 65. And then I'm going to make another curves layer. New adjustment layer and then curves one more time. And then this is where it gets crazy. No, I'm just joking. This is like my favorite curves layer to do because this really adds the contrast. It's like a really weird S. It's like it's like the S that I want it to be. Do you know? What, does that make sense? No. Okay, whatever. I'll just stop cracking jokes. Okay. So that's RGB, and I might have to tweak this a tiny bit, just depending on how it looks in the end. And then I'm gonna go to the reds layer, and I'm just gonna pull this up. I'm gonna fix it so it's not too much. Like, you're probably just going to have to go and edit each and every layer, depending on the colors that you want, styling that you want. And the green. I know a lot of fashion photographers use curves. Like, some fashion photographers only use curves. And I'm like, damn, how do you guys, that's like Harry Potter stuff. I can't do that. I don't know, it's just really hard. It's uh, curves, curves are extremely hard to get it to look natural, like not clowny. I think that's like my new favorite word, clowny. Okay, and I think I'm gonna keep this as it is right there. So here's um, the second curves layer, which just makes everything pop a little bit more. And our last curves layer, I swear it's the last one. <clears throat> For this one, we're just going to go to green. We're not gonna go to RGB or red. And we're literally just gonna drop this. and. Um, then we're going to go to blue and bring this down just slightly. There we go. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like the effect that we wanted. And to lighten the entire picture, uh, go to layer, new fill layer, and then solid color. And you want to pick like a really light um, beige nude color so that's what I'm doing and then go to normal and then actually no just keep it at normal actually I was gonna go to lighten but change my mind and keep it to about seven percent I think that's good you can always um fix that if, if you want and last we'll go to layer new adjustment layer and then vibrance and I'm just going to lower the saturation. And let's just add some more vibrance. There we go. I'm just going to go through each and make sure everything is good. 
So that was like the big, this was like the most important layer. And um, also, if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, you don't want it to be so dramatic. What I usually do is if, um, if it's too overwhelming on the photo, I'll collect everything. So I'll go to the top layer, select the bottom layer, holding shift, and then press command G. And that creates a group with all the colors on it. And then what I'll do is just lower the opacity on the entire group. So it's just very natural. It looks a lot less overwhelming on the photo. So that's kind of like my own trick. And um, so this is the effect that I wanted to go over with you guys and I think it looks great. I do get a lot of questions about sharpening an image. Now if you want to sharpen an image afterwards, what I would recommend, um, I'm going to show you guys like a small technique. I'm just going to paste on, I'm just, I literally just pasted the image on by the way. You could go to filter, other, and then high pass. And then what you're going to want to do is set it to a really obnoxious high pass, like 33. I mean, you're never going to want to put your pictures out like that on Facebook or something. Um, press OK. And then you want to go from normal to soft light. And it really does sharpen it pretty well. But honestly, I don't really see the point in sharpening a photo like that. Unless it's kind of like your style. So it's very subtle, but it does sharpen. And you can also change the opacity. And you can change it from soft light to overlay if you really want it to be more dramatic. To sharpen an image, and I'll do a whole tutorial on this. But just for this effect, I'll add like an 8% sharpen. And um, that's all that, that I have for this tutorial. I hope you guys like this effect. This is one of my favorite colors to use for pictures. And um, thank you guys so much for watching.